All right, so let's move on to Git. And Git shouldn't take as long because I think we, we, we get all the things we can do with it. So again, uh, Git was made in 2005 with Linux, uh, for, for Linux. Um, uh, it, the goal is for it to be fast and quick um, and, and must protect against data corruption. Data corruption being uh, losing data or um, uh, having issues because of, uh, because of the way that it saves the data, whether things are being rewritten, et cetera. Uh, Git had to overcome some of those things you have with other with the CDS. So uh, Git is designed for frequent branch, branching. So it is designed for the sole purpose of you being able to kind of take create all these different branches and merge it back together fairly easily. Right? Um, you can use Git and to emulate CDS and submergent servers, um, i.e. Um, different clients and subversion can connect to Git if you wanted to. All right, so um, with that being said, let's go ahead and, and let's go work through some of this stuff, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm create another directory called Git, and then I'm going to clear it. Bring it back to the top. So this is my Git directory. Matter of fact, let me, just so we let me take Git and move it up one level. And there it is. Okay. So I'm gonna cd into my Git directory, and there's nothing there. Okay. Now the first thing I'm gonna do in this, um, I'm going to config. Um, uh, get to work with my, uh, my GitHub or my Git server username, right? So in this case, uh, my, it's, it's me. And then maybe my Git config, um, um, All right. So now, so what that did is that um, for Git, in order to connect to the repos, it has to have the, the right um, name and email address so that one, every change you make is attributed to you. And then two, so it can use it for kind of username, password authentication. All right. So here I'm going, I'm going to clear this. All right. So I'm in my Git directory. There's nothing there. But I'm going to do a git init. And essentially what this does is that any directory that I run this in is going to initialize the directory. And what that does, really, it sets it up for git operations. All right. That, that ls-al, this, that command shows um, hidden files. Hidden files are any directory that begins with a, a dot. Okay. So if I were to do an ls, I wouldn't see anything. But when I run that ls-al, I see my hidden directories. So if I were to go into that hidden directory, I would see principally this thing that's kind of set up similarly like that other repo. Right? I got my branches. I got a config. And if I were to even go into config, I see that I have some other stuff that's in there. Right? But nonetheless, we're not going to get into all that those things because it can get pretty deep really fast. Um, and I'm going to clear it just so we're all tracking along. All right. Now that I, I've initialized the directory, um, let's go ahead and let's create a couple of files. Uh, so I'm going to do an echo import. And all I'm doing is creating just files, right? It doesn't really matter what files they are. It just, I'm just creating files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this, just like we did an SDN add, I'm going to add everything that I've created to my local repo. And that, and that dot means get add every directory that's here, right? Everything that's here. So when I do that and I do a get status, I see that of those things, uh, my test.java file was added. 
Now, oh, you say, oh, I forgot to include this. Well, let me go ahead and um, create another thing. And I was going to name this um, uh, my text file dot txt. And then I'm going to add it again. And then you'll notice it just simply add it to the list. Okay. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to commit this. I'm, I'm going to do a git commit uh, dash m um, my first commit, something like that. And what that does, it takes it and commits it to my local repo. Not to the not to the server, not to anywhere, it's just here locally. Right? And then if I did a git logs dash stack, oh uh, yeah, damn it log, okay. I can see the commit that I made and the commit number and what was committed. Okay. Now, if I were to uh, rm remove the test.java and then get a, a git add like that and then uh, git status, you see that it deleted some file. And then if I did another commit, like that, and then kind of went back and I'm gonna get a log, man. There it is. I see that there's one that where I added the file, but I see that here in my other commit made by this person at this time, it, it was removed. Okay. All right. Any questions about what I did so far? Nope. All right. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to leave it up there, and I don't, you know, I, don't know, I don't think it's going to disconnect us. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to GitHub.com. I'm going to create a new one, and let's call it um, um, New Repo, just that, right? I'm going to make it a public repo. And I'm gonna create the repo, right? So look, it gives me some nice, cool, easy stuff that I already have here, okay? Which is really nice because you're gonna try to do some of these things and you know, you're like, well, how does that work? And this kind of walks you through step by step. So um so so what I have is a a a a an existing repo, okay? So what I have to do is just get remote ad right here. At origin, this adds uh, essentially a pointer to my local repo to this repo. So I'm gonna come here and really I'm just gonna paste that right there. Oh, they didn't paste correctly. Um, like that, okay? And that's gonna add that there. Now, now watch this. Now when I go to do this, it's, I think it's gonna give me an error. So now I'm ready to push my commits to this repo. I didn't, okay, good. So here it is, I'm there, now watch this. See, there it is. I pushed from my machine over to my new repo. But you see here, I don't have any branches, right? So um, some of the things I could do is like this. I could do uh, git um, branch, and I'll say my branch, right? It could be just, just as easy as that. And um, when I do a uh, git status, I still see I'm on the master branch, okay? But when I do a git uh, checkout, which kind of is a thing for for, uh, 
or switching branches. I'm gonna do um, what's the name of branch? Uh, yeah, my branch like this. And then if I do a get status, I see that I'm on my branch. So if I so it, while I'm on my branch, if I do a um, create, um, let's see like this. So if I do a let's see echo test. my file, something like that, that test, All right? And then I, I can do LS to see that I have that new file there, then I'm gonna do a git add, then I'm gonna do a git commit, dash M, uh, hello, All right? And so from there, I can see that I, oh, status. I do always do that. Status. Really? Oh, sorry. There, I see that it added that file right here. That's the latest commit. All right, and then Uh, so here's why. So in this, it didn't create the branch. So if I already come here and say, um, uh, my branch like that, and I created that branch. Hmm. All right, you work origin. Uh, hello. Mm, 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 mm. This is what happens when you go off script. <laughs> Sometimes you run into some of these issues. You're like, okay, what was that again? Um, oh, no, no. There it is. Okay. There it is. All right. And so now in your branch, you see that this, you have that, but in your branch, you have those two files, okay? All right, um, with that being said, I think we've hit our first hour, and for the most part, let's, let's, um, let's, let me get through a few slides, a few other slides, and then I think we'll be done, okay? Um, so here's the workflow, just so you can have something to point back to. Um, so the goal is almost always what you got to do first is that you're going to, you're going to do a, a get, you're going to do a clone, clone followed by some URL. And, um, you get that URL from Git. Okay. Once you clone it and you make some changes, Ultimately, you're going, typically you do a, uh, uh, a git uh, pull, and that pulls any additional changes from that, from that particular um, repository to you. Um, git checkout uh, often is used to uh, switch branches. But then ultimately from there, you do git add followed by git um, commit followed by git push. 
And that's normally the way that it works together, okay? Uh, pull, edit, add, commit, push. All right, pull, edit your files, add your files, commit it, and push. This last bullet right here. That's the winner, okay? All right, so we talked, we, we already worked through a lot of this, okay? So there are uh, GUI front ends for working through stuff, just so you can see it. Um, even for Mac, uh, there's a GitHub desktop. And from here, pretty much everything I can do on the command line, I can do here as well. I can submit pull requests. I can uh, sync things up. I can compare changes, all kinds of things, right? And you, and you have them for Windows as well, right? So just a nice way to kind of, you know, for those of you that kind of like this thing, you can do, you can do it that way as well. We talked about, uh, now this is probably important too, uh, for your, get, there is GitHub, but if you want a, a, something you can install locally, you can download GitLab and set that up for your, for your own service. And GitLab, uh, provides more project management features because of who the audience is more business oriented. Okay. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.